Hey guys, Jamie here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the RCF 705AS subwoofer. This is an active sub, meaning it has an amplifier built into it, and I'll just give you a quick rundown of the specs. It is a 750-watt sub. Uh, RCF do not distinguish whether this is, in fact, RMS power or uh, peak power, but I would be assuming RMS because it is a fairly powerful sub. Uh, it is a 15-inch subwoofer. They also do an 18-inch variant of this the 708 I believe it is um, and it is their mid-range subwoofer coming in just below the 902 12 inch and 905 15 inch subs uh, which pack a thousand watts of power um, but which are also fairly more expensive than this now this does have an SPL of 130 decibels uh, meaning it is quite loud and it is efficient with its power anyway um, unlike some of the other cheaper subs that you'll get um, it's a solid Baltic birch construction, very hard, and it's built quite well, as all RCF products are. Um, and as usual, the sound quality is absolutely exceptional, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to give you a demo of the sound in this video, uh, mainly because, well, you, you're just not going to be able to tell through YouTube. Best way to find out how this sounds, get down to your local DJ store or go to any trade shows such as NAM, Music Missy, BPM in the UK um, and such of them and they do have uh, these on display and uh, you can get a demo of them. Now I'll just point out, this is the uh, older revision of the sub, I believe they have given this a facelift but the specs are pretty much identical um, and also what's worth noting is that this sub does come in pretty heavily at 37 kilograms or 82 pounds. Uh, now that means generally it is a two-man lift if you're uh, carrying this long distances, or well, uh, long load paths anyway, uh, you would not want to be carrying this single-handedly because it is, well, it, you could easily do your back in carrying this really. Um, so always best to do it with two people. Um, and you have got handles either side, I'll just give you a show of those now. So you've got one that side and one on the other there. Very strong and sturdy handles and you have also got a nice mount pole at the top of the sub there. Which is an M20 mount on my sub so it screws in into the top. Um, I think the newer version just has a regular pole mount though you'll have to check that um, because unfortunately this is just the older version. Now I am going to go and take a look at the back of the sub and have a look at some of the connections. Now on the back of the sub, RCF have been incredibly generous with the number of connections they've given us. We can see down here, we've got the two main power con connectors, in and out. So this means you can daisy chain subs together, or if you have got any devices such as speakers that do use power con, uh, or you could even get a power con to IEC connector if you're running your top caps just above these, which is very useful, saving you running an extra lead. Uh, now you have got XLR or jack uh, TRS combo input and uh, two forms of outputs. One is crossed over at either 90, 100 or 120 hertz um, and the other one is just a link. So you can link multiple subs together um, and what's also nice about this sub is it does have dual left and right inputs. So it's designed if you're going to use it as a single sub with two top caps, which is what I do, or uh, two subs with two top caps, which I might do in the future, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you have got a volume control here, uh, and then you do have a sub phase of 0 or 180 degrees, which is also just quite a nice feature. Um, you've got your power switch down there, and uh, a few LED indicators to tell you whether you're peaking, or whether the sub is getting signal, or whether there's a problem, or if it's on or not. Um, this sub is fan cooled slash passively cooled, but it does get fairly warm when it's on. So if you have been running it, especially to its limit, um, do be careful when like touching the back after you've used it for a while, uh, because it does get hot. What's also nice to notice is actually on the top of the sub as well, you have got these mounting or indents in the top of the sub, which allows you to stack subs on top of each other. Um, or top caps as well, you can see there are uh, the smaller ones over there uh, which is just a nice feature, saves space if you're storing them especially if you've got a fairly small garage like myself. Now um, generally sound quality wise, as I've mentioned briefly earlier on this is r relatively good, uh, I would say you would probably be able to do better if you spent more however for its price and particularly um, how it's active and you detect the cost of a amp 
uh, extra leads than that. It's definitely worth the amount that you're paying for it, which is about 700 to 800 pounds in the United Kingdom, and I think somewhere around uh, 1200 or 1300 dollars in the States. Um, but you'll have to check that, obviously. I think they do promotions on these all the time, um, or in packages as such. But uh, they are, obviously, it's seven, several hundred pounds is a lot of money, and it's really up to you to buy this or not. But uh, I will say this. I bought uh, my pair of RCF uh, 312As uh, on recommendation from uh, two guys, Brian Red and uh, Joe Lott. I'll post their links to the channels below. Um, I went literally bought them just on their recommendation and compared to the crappy pro sounds I used before they're unbelievable I mean you could uh, you could argue that uh, the pro sounds are just crap and it's anything's an improvement but uh, I think for the amount I paid for them um, and how loud they are for the price it's uh, definitely worth it and I think that yeah you'll be very pleased with this as well because uh, obviously RCF do make really good quality speakers um, and as I said it makes cost a lot to you, but if you add in the cost of, say, a uh, kilowatt amplifier as well, a decent one in fact, then you will be looking at a similar price uh, for a pair of passive, sorry, for a passive sub and an amp to go with it. Um, but I, I can um, not find anything to complain about on this other than just the sheer weight of it, which uh, I guess comes with subs of this size. Um, and for me personally, 15 inch subs are probably the ideal range because 18 inch is generally too big unless you've got a big van to carry your gear in, which uh, a lot of people don't have, I guess. So 15 inch is probably the largest I'd want to go for a sub. Uh, and this coming in at about 800 watts, 750, 800 watts, uh, does the job for me in most occasions. I wouldn't be able to tell how many people it would have gotten up to, but. Uh, I would say generally you'd be able to do a party of at least uh, 300 or so and still have adequate bass with this. Uh, but if you're looking at that then you might want a second one of these. And um, also I would say as well if you're looking at getting a sub uh, to go with your uh, top cap system, do have a look at Brian Red's video on sub placement because it's incredibly useful. Uh, I know many people make the mistakes of um, putting subs. Or, uh, Arguably, you would put the top caps right above the subs, but sometimes, um, in the, well, actually, in the vast majority of cases, it's better to put the top caps either on the left and the right, and then you have your sub right in the middle, so um, the sound will get well equ be equidistantly spread around the room. Um, and well, if you have them at the sides, then you're in the middle and you have no bass, I guess. So uh, just have a look at that video, and that should hopefully. Uh, help you with sub placement. But anyway, I hope if you were looking at these, uh, getting one of these, um, I hope this has helped you anyway. I think even though this is um, the previous revision of it, the connectors and that are pretty much the same on the back. They might have made the amp panel slightly smaller. Uh, however, it's still definitely a good buy, um, as, as I said, all RCF products are. Um, and I hope this has helped you as I understand there aren't that many videos on this uh, on YouTube. I know Brian's done one on the more recent revision of this. Uh, but uh, I can't really find anything to complain about with this. So uh, hopefully you'll be happy with it. And uh, I hope this has helped as I said. And I will see you in a later video where I will take a look at the RCF 312A.